On 30th October 1961, a specially made Tu-95V strategic bomber of the Soviet Union took off from Oleana Air Base, north of USSR. After two hours of flying, the plane climbed to an altitude of 34,500 feet and dropped a 27-ton three-stage thermonuclear bomb. The bomb glided down by a parachute and exploded in the Tushukabi nuclear testing range. This was a Tsar Bomba, the emperor of all bombs. The Tsar Bomba had an yield of 50 megaton, which was 1,570 times more powerful than the bomb dropped at Hiroshima and 10 times more powerful than all bombs dropped in World War II combined. In this video, we will explain the design of the Tsar Bomba and its characteristics. We will then use the detail to see what will happen if Tsar Bomba is to be detonated near India. The Tsar Bomba was enormous. It had a length of 8 meters and a diameter of 2.1 meters and it weighed 27 tons. That's equivalent to 7 Asian elephants. Due to its heavy weight, the Soviets had to completely modify their main bomber in service, the Tu-95. The Tu-95 bomb bay doors and fuselage had to be removed and since the bomb was so big, it had to be hung in the belly of the plane. The pilot barely managed to get the plane off the ground with this bomb. Another Tu-95 bomber was to accompany to monitor and take readings of the effects of the bomb. The Tsar Bomba is a staged thermonuclear bomb. It has a primary stage and a secondary stage. The primary stage is a nuclear fission bomb, which in turn detonates a secondary stage, which is a nuclear fusion bomb. I'll explain this in detail. The bomb dropped in Hiroshima is what is called a nuclear fission bomb. Here, fast-moving neutrons collide with uranium-235 atoms, which then splits into its constituents and release energy and more neutrons. The released neutrons will then strike the next series of uranium atoms, and this process would continue as a chain reaction. But nuclear fission bombs are technically very taxing, and the nuclear fallout is very high. Then came the staged thermonuclear bomb, or hydrogen bomb as they are called. Here, the primary stage is the same fission bomb, the fission bomb will explode and generate very high temperatures, that is in the order of 100 million degrees Celsius, which is many times hotter than the core of the sun, which is only 15 million degrees Celsius. Such high temperature will start the second stage, which is called a nuclear fusion reaction. Here, the fuel consists of isotopes of hydrogen, that is deuterium and tritanium. Under such high temperature, they combine to form helium along with the release of energy. Nuclear fusion produces three to four times more energy than nuclear fission. That's why Tsar Bomba was so powerful. Nuclear fusion is a phenomenon that takes place inside the stars because it needs very high temperatures. Nuclear fusion is the main source of energy for all the stars like our sun. The bomb dropped in Hiroshima produced an yield of 13 kilotons. India's second Pokhran test called Operation Shakti produced an yield of 56 kilotons. The US Castle Bravo device produced an yield of 15 megatons. The Tsar Bomba produced a net yield of 50 megatons. Tsar Bomba remains the biggest bomb to be tested by mankind. The Soviets actually wanted the Tsar Bomba to be 100 megatons, but they soon realized two problems with such a powerful bomb. Firstly, the bomber dropping the bomb will not be able to safely come back after detonation. Secondly, beyond 50 megatons, most of the bomb's power that is released actually escapes to space. So nukes beyond 50 megaton is useless. So on October 30th, 1961, a specially made Tu-95B flown by test pilot Major Andrei Yaganovich Donotsev, along with its observer plane, took off from Olinia Air Base, north of USSR. After two hours of flying, the plane at an altitude of 34,500 feet drop the Tsar Bomba. To slow down the descent, a parachute was inflated. This helped the bomber and its crew to escape to a safe distance. As it descended, the Tsar Bomba's radar constantly measured the altitude, and when it reached 4 kilometers from the ground, it detonated. The nuclear mushroom cloud rose to a height of 67 kilometers and was observed 850 kilometers from the blast. 
The fireball was visible at a distance of more than 1,000 kilometers and was observed in Norway, Greenland, and Alaska. The blast wave circled the globe three times, with the first one taking 36 hours and 27 minutes. Glass windows were shattered 780 kilometers in a village on Dixon Island. Radio communications were affected 100 kilometers from the test site for 40 minutes. This was due to ionization of the atmosphere. The SAR Bomba was created for only one purpose, to scare the West, and it served its purpose well. Now as a hypothesis, we will find out what would have happened if SAR Bomba was detonated near India. If the SAR Bomba was to be detonated in the Bay of Bengal, the fireball would be visible in all coastal areas and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. If it was exploded in the Indian Ocean, the flare would be visible for 1000 kilometers till Karnataka and the whole of Sri Lanka will see it. If detonated in Lakshadweep Island, the fireball will be seen all the way up till Goa. India tested all its nuclear weapons in the Thar Desert at Pokhran, but all these tests conducted so far have been underground and the purposefully kept at low yield to avoid a nuclear fallout. Also, India is against the first use of nuclear weapons and has worked towards peace in the region. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.